Rings of Power is here. It's upon us now. Many people have already seen the first two episodes, and they do release tonight on Amazon. And the reaction is much like The Last Jedi. That's right, The Last Jedi, a film that was overly praised by the media and then fans really started to see what was going on at that point in time. Now, with Rings of Power, most fans have already seen the song and dance, but the media is still out there holding the line, holding that corporate line, protecting that multi-billion dollar company, because of course they are. But we're going to look a little deeper at some of the reviews that we have seen right now and talk about that. And there's a couple of clips that I want to play from some of these reviews that I think is very, very telling, very interesting stuff. So the first thing we're going to start with is one of the more prominent Lord of the Rings channels, and that is uh, Nerd of the Rings. Now, Nerd of the Rings has uh, their Rings of Power episode one and two, my first impressions, no spoiler review, 11,000 upvotes to 15,000 downvotes, 15,000, and that's like 300,000 views so far on this one, 300,000 views and it has 15,000 downvotes. Now, one thing I think is very interesting in this video is, this is 43 seconds into it. This person that runs this channel, and by the way, I've watched Nerd of Rings over the years for a lot of their lore videos and stuff like that. Really good coverage on a lot of things. But they're already trying to draw a line in the sand. This review is not for you if you think like this. Already drawing a line in the sand. Listen, listen to what they say here in this review. I think it's very interesting. A quick FYI, if you're one of those who's fully dedicated to either hating or loving this show regardless of its actual content, this review, or any of my coverage on this series, likely won't be something you'll be interested in. But if you want an honest opinion and you're interested in nuanced assessments and respectful conversations around the world of Tolkien and its adaptations, I think you'll enjoy the Nerd of the Rings community. So, if, you're in, if you don't think the way I want you to think, you're not welcome here. But if you're wanting respectful conversations and nuanced discussion, so you draw a, you draw a line in the sand for people... And, and let's be real, that has nothing to do with the people that want to overly love it. That was a shot at the people that are hating on it, that are showing the downvotes and the negativity. That's exactly what that was. Make no mistake about it. And that's what you get right there. It, it, the fact that you are trying to sit here and claim that you want respectful conversations and nuanced discussions, but you're already painting all of these people with a broad brush, that's projection at its finest right there. Already setting the tone. Maybe that's why you got downvoted to hell. Pretty interesting. That's all I'm saying. Now, moving on. There's more reviews out there. Uh, <laughs> IGN's review, 1,700 upvotes to 11,000 downvotes. Holy shit. Now, I don't even know what the, they ended up giving it. What did they end up giving? I'm not going to play the audio here. The verdict, they, they gave it a an 8. So they gave it an 8 right there. And it has been downvoted to hell and back. A few other reviews that are out there. Here's Joe Blow, uh, 1,100 upvotes, 6,300 downvotes. Oof, oof. Continuing on, I don't know who this is, but it's, uh, they had you know, a decent amount of views. Uh, 700 upvotes to 2,500. Uh, 700 upvotes to 2,500 downvotes. I listened to a little bit of it. Uh, again, I, look, man, you know, I respect it when people are fans. Uh, I have no problem. I honestly have no problem if you like uh, Rings of Power. Like, that's not my problem here. My problem is, is when you have people like this that are saying, uh, if you're dedicated to hating or loving, uh, you're not welcome here, but if you're looking for respectful conversations, you're welcome here. Like, what the fuck does that even mean? How about you not be a little bitch and just give your opinion and let people think whatever they want? How about that for a change of pace? But no, you gotta put your qualifiers out there. That's the whole, th oh, if you voted for this person, you're not welcome here. Like, shut the fuck up. 
It's so ridiculous to hear people do that. Now, I don't know if these people have done it, and I'm not claiming that they did, uh, but I watched a little bit of it. Not my cup of tea, but I, based on the three minutes I listened to, I didn't really have a problem with anything uh, that, that this uh, rings and realms were saying. But I just wanted to show the ratio involved with it. Um, John Campia, the guy who essentially just claims that there's all of this toxicity out there and then he gets mad when people don't agree with him and then he throws people under the bus and claims that they're a bunch of uh cousin humping man babies i think is one of his uh popular terms claims the toxicity is out there in the movie sphere and we need to remove it but then he calls a group of people a name names over and over again because they don't have the opinion he likes well Clearly, people aren't liking your opinion either, John. Now we go to uh, an interesting one. And the reason I want to play, this is from Dan Merle, who was used to, used to be part of Screen Junkies. And it's interesting that Dan Merle, which Dan Merle was pretty brutal on the show. Like, he, he, was, he was pretty brutal. And uh, so I watched all the way through. And I've known of Dan Merle for a long time. But uh, Dan Merle's a, a guy who joined the mob when Andy Signor got Me too He joined in the mob, even though he was personal friends with, with Andy Signor. He joined the mob, uh, joined the cancel mob. And then once it was proven that everything that was said about Andy uh, were lies, Dan Merle just kind of tucked his tail and ran. Pretty interesting. I just thought that was interesting info. Now, as he's kind of ripped the show apart... We get to a point in his review that I think is very interesting, and it just shows you the mindset, the mindset of these people and how they think. Listen to, even when the fans have been proven right, even when every single fan that has prejudged this trash fire based on what we saw and all of the interviews and the lore changes and everything, even with all of those fans being proven right, Dan Merle still has a problem with the fans. Harfoots, the folk who would eventually become the hobbits that we know and love. I would love to be able to rave about this show, even if only just to spite the people that have devoted their lives to destroying it, but I can't. I wanted this show to work. I want to he wants to, he he just wanted to love the show just to spite those those toxic fans out there. He just wanted to spite those toxic fans because how dare those toxic fans be proven right? But he wanted, he wanted so dearly, so dearly to love this show just to spite all of you toxic fans. One more time. I would love to be able to rave about this show, even if only just to spite the people that have devoted their lives to destroying it. But I can't. <laughs> that is so funny to listen to that type of reaction. And that kind of gives you the mindset into these people that are just so dedicated to licking that corporate billion dollar boot. Like it's not about you, the fans. It, it, it's not, it's about spiting you, the fans. And even when he agrees and even when he confirms that the fans were right, he still can't help himself to still Talk about how toxic all of us are, because that is that shill mentality right there. Now, we go on to the king of Lord of the Rings fandom, and that would be my good friend, Gary from Nerdrotic. Woo-wee! His live stream is over 200,000 views. And that like-to-dislike ratio is pretty damn good. 18,000 upvotes. To only 200 down votes. That, my friends, is the king of the uh, Lord of the Rings fandom. And Gary's crushing it, man. And that speaks volumes right there. And if you have not watched his review, I highly recommend it. Um, it is the definitive breakdown that you're going to get on this show because he has the passion. He has the knowledge. He has been following this entire project from the beginning. And no one is more plugged into this than him. There are other great creators out there as well. People like George the Giant Slayer, uh, our very own Disparu from Geeks and Gamers. He's crushing it. Uh, you know, Night's Watch is crushing it. There's going to be a lot of awesome coverage out there, but in my humble opinion, the definitive coverage will come from Nerdrotic. So you guys go check that out. Again, I thought this was a little interesting breakdown that we could go over just to kind of see what 
the temperature in the room is. And again, I, you know, I have like, especially like something like this channel here. I, I, I'm not encouraging anyone. Like this is a channel of 2,000 subscribers. Again, I, I think the three minutes I watched, very genuine. I obviously have opinions on people like John Campia, IGN, Dan Merle. You know, I, I have strong opinions on them. Uh, Rings of Power, I think, just that drawing the line in the sand in the beginning is is such a dick move. Um, but the king right there is Gary. That's the king. That's the guy right there you want to be following when it comes to this stuff. Uh, I'll be on Friday Night Tice with him tomorrow with the rest of the crew. It's going to be awesome. If you guys like this video, hit the uh, Melee button, like the video, check us out over on Locals and on Rumble, and of course, GeeksAndGamers.com. Subscribe to the channel, comment below, have a great day, and we will talk to you later.